Hi, good morning, everyone. So last class, we, we began discussing the Fujinogumo model. It's a two-variable neuron model, and it's uh, constructed by reducing the four-variable Hodgson-Huxley model. So we did this exercise last time. We took the Hodgson-Huxley model, made two assumptions about the gating variables. We said M is a fast variable. Therefore, uh, we assume that M quickly approaches the equilibrium value of M infinity. Right. So if you can write this as uh, tau dm by dt is equal to minus m plus m infinity. If m is a fast variable, that means tau is a very small number. We will just assume that m is equal to m infinity all the time. Right. So that is one assumption. The other assumption is that uh, h is a constant because so it's a slow variable. So that gets rid of two differential equations by converting them into static equations. So at the end of that, and so a lot of simplifications are done by the, in the original Hodgson Huxley paper. At the end of that, we are left with uh, these two equations. Basically, 2 and 3. 2 basically tells you what is f. So right, f is a cubic function, a uh, cubic polynomial. So it has uh, three roots, one at the origin, one at a, one at 1. And it looks like an inverted n, the letter n. If you invert it, it looks like this. And then uh, the second equation, the w equation, is a linear equation, bv by bv minus rw where B and R are supposed to be small, very small numbers, small positive quantities. So here, V is the like membrane voltage. W is just a summary of representation of all the gating variables. So now if you draw the null clines, the, the F null cline or uh, V null cline and uh, the W null cline, the V null cline looks like this inverted end, as we have seen before. W null cline is basically a straight line. Right, if you superimpose one on the other, it looks like what you see in the left graph here. So for i equal to zero, what happens is uh, the, so if you look at this quantity, if i equal to zero, right, uh, you can see very easily that v, v and w equal to zero is a fixed point because f of e is zero at v equal to zero right and you have w here so similarly here also if 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 you take i is equal to 0 right and if you also assume w equal to 0 and v equal to 0 then you will have d over dt equal to 0 and dw over dt equal to 0 so that's a fixed point and uh, it's also that that happens to be the so origin is a fixed point so let us now study the stability of uh, the, this fixed point and how do you do that just like before you calculate the jacobian so Jacobian here is right dou f by dou v dou f by dou capital F, that is the whole expression. Uh, dou f by dou v and dou f by dou omega. Similarly for the second one it is dou g by dou v and dou g by dou omega. So if you do that, you can very easily see that you have f prime uh, and minus one, right, for the for first no, first equation. And then v and minus r for the second equation, that's straightforward. So now if you calculate determinant and trace, so the determinant will be f prime v minus f prime v r plus b, right? That's the for determinant. And trace is f prime v minus r. So we know how to find stability given trace and the determinant, right? So we have seen, we have calculated this map long ago, right? So if uh, delta is negative, you only have saddles. And if uh, delta is positive and if Tau is positive, you have unstable points, fixed points, whether it's spiral or node. And if tau, tau is negative, you have stable points, whether spiral or a node. Okay, so let us apply this and find out whether the origin is stable. So, so for delta A positive, right, uh, and tau negative, that right, you have a stable fixed point. We are not saying whether it's a node or a spiral. I mean, we are not interested in that right now. So delta is greater than zero means f, so because uh, delta is this quantity, right? So this means that f prime v times minus r is greater than minus b, right? So if you multiply by minus on both sides, you have f prime v r is less than b, or f prime v is less than b by r. So now you can see, you can have a geometric interpretation for this result, because f prime v is the slope of the uh, first null plane, because first null plane is given by uh, v, uh, sorry, W is equal to F of V uh, plus I. 
Okay, in this case, so let's say I external or whatever I whatever, apply. So F prime V is basically so this is uh, the V null plane. So F prime V is nothing but the slope of the V null plane, and we know that uh, the other one. The second equation is W dot is equal to B V minus R W, right? Um, V minus R W. So if this is zero, right? If W uh, so R W so W is equal to B by R times V, right? This is W null plane. So therefore, the slope of W null plane is B by R. Slope of uh, V null plane is F prime. So F prime is less than B by R means when the, the case where the slope of the F null plane is less than the slope of the W null plane. Okay, that's the first point. So if this is true geometrically, then delta is positive. Oops. Then the second one is uh, for tau, right? Tau is given by f prime v minus r, and tau is positive means f prime v minus r is positive. Now we have seen that b and r are small quantities. Okay, so so we'll assume that R is close to zero, right? And therefore we'll just say that F prime V must be positive. So if tau is positive positive means F prime V is positive. Okay, so now let us consider if the as a external current or applied current IA is gradually increased, what happens? So first let us start with uh, IA is equal to zero. For I IA equal to zero, we have just seen that the origin is a fixed point. Right now in this case, the, the base plot is such that it gives some really beautiful dynamics, right? Uh, let us see what happens. So the origin is a uh, fixed point, but is it stable? So the slope of the F null plane, so if you let us look at this picture. So for uh, IA is equal to zero, this is how the phase plot looks, right? The, the inverted N-shaped uh, null plane of V, that's V null plane, looks like this. Then the W null plane, the straight line looks like this. This to intersect at the origin. So first thing is uh, for stability of the uh, for delta to be positive, we want stable slope of the apnel plane to should be greater than uh, slope of the um, W null plane, right, which is not true because uh, just one second. Um, Sorry, for delta to be positive, slope of the venal venal plane should be less than slope of the W null plane, which is true because basically the F prime is a negative quantity, whereas the slope of the W null plane is positive. So therefore, uh, uh, slope of the venal plane is less than slope of the W null plane. So which is true. Therefore, delta is positive. Right. The second thing is. Uh, slope of the apnel plane is negative, so therefore tau is negative. So we have seen that the tau is positive implies f prime is positive. So so the contrary is also true. F prime is negative, so tau is negative. So delta is positive, tau is negative. Therefore, it is uh, it is a stable point. We haven't seen said anything whether it is focus or a node, but we have just concluded that it's a stable point. Stable point means uh, if you start from you sit there, nothing will happen. You will stay there forever. But if you port up, if you are port up from there, you will come back to that point. So this we know. But uh, in this current state of the phase plot, this return back to the stable fixed point at origin uh, happens in a very interesting way. Let us see what what that what that is. <coughs> so let us assume our initial condition is uh, such that. Right. Uh, we only so basically, what happens? How do you change and set the initial condition? You give a pulse. So I A is like a I A of T is like a pulse. So when you give this pulse, right, uh, V of zero take, takes a non-zero value. Because initially the voltage is zero. I give this current pulse. So voltage gets uh, you know increased. Uh, to some non-zero positive value. Now the question is: so you know that to get an action potential, I need to give a pulse of 
sufficient amplitude only then you will have an action potential so now therefore let us consider what happens when we uh, start with some initial voltage so basically the effect of external current is to increase v not the initial voltage to some positive value let us also assume that uh, w0 is 0 so let us assume that the w part is 0 initially and uh, only v is increased so here let us consider two cases my initial condition is within this stretch from from the origin to this this uh, zero crossing right a okay which is between 0 and 1 or it can uh, let us assume the initial condition is sufficiently high that it goes beyond a and takes some value between 0 and uh, between a and 1 so we are basically considering two cases now initial condition of voltage is between 0 and a or between a and 1 so what is the difference between these two cases so let us see that let us see what happens if it is between 0 and 1 so how will how will the uh, the state change after that so to understand these questions we need to first to have some approximate at least a qualitative understanding of the flow of the vector field in the vw uh, vw plot which is this whole phase plane so how do we do that so we have seen that uh, v dot is equal to f so v dot is um, fv minus w so i is zero in this case so i'm ignoring i right so here if you increase i so the on the v null plane that we have seen these arguments before also i am repeating the same arguments for this for this case so f of v is uh, basically the v null plane right i mean this this function noted n is the v null plane so on that curve uh, v dot is zero right so if i go above that curve that means w is increased further okay so we so basically in this uh, this thing uh, this expression here the v dot becomes negative so above the v null plane v dot is negative so just like before right we have seen some simple examples So here there are two null planes, and these two null planes divide the whole plane into four regions. What are these four regions? Uh, hope you can see my cursor. One is this region, the infinite region. So this, this whole thing here. The second is uh, this region. Okay, so it's also infinite. The third is this region, which is also infinite. The fourth is this region. So all four are infinite. Unlike the example of uh, glycolysis, which we have seen in the last class, uh, where one or two of I think one region there was uh, finite um, because there's a restriction that uh, both variables are positive, but here there is no such restriction, and therefore all the four regions are infinite. So now, so above the V null plane, the two regions, that is this one and this one in these two regions, V dot is negative. So we have indicated that here. what about w null plane w null plane is like this w dot is equal to b v minus r w both b and r are positive right so therefore if you increase uh, so on this graph w dot is zero so if you go above this this graph that means increase w to higher values then this quantity will become negative okay that's clear so which means above the w null plane w dot is negative so let us see that so the, this is one region where it uh, is above the w null plane so w dot is negative and this is another region where w dot is negative so we can easily fill up the blanks right and find out what is what in other regions also so finally what you have is <coughs> this region v dot is negative w dot is negative so flow is turned to the left and downwards in this region w dot v dot is positive w dot is negative that means flow is turned to the right or downwards in this region v dot is positive w dot is positive so flow is turned rightwards and upwards and in this region v dot is negative w dot is positive that is flow is turned leftwards and upwards so kind of you can see some kind of circulating current but one more thing we should note here is so b and r are uh, very small values See on the whole, W dot uh, the the amp vector uh, component in the W direction is generally smaller. 
compared to the vector component on the v direction so the only place where really so that is v dot amplitude is generally high higher than double dot amplitude but the only place where double dot can dominate v dot is on the v null client because on the v null client by definition v dot is zero right but on uh, on in this space long on this curve right uh, w dot has to be uh, is 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 non zero except at the fixed point where both are zero so on this graph v dot is zero and therefore w dot can dominate it otherwise most places in this in the phase plane v dot is higher than w dot in amplitude that is mod v dot is much greater than mod mod w dot so therefore so you see the way we have I've drawn these uh, arrows here most arrows are horizontal i am not really showing much uh, so that is if i look at here in the upper regions uh, above the v null plane curve v dot is negative and w dot is positive that means v dot is leftwards and upwards it is leftward but i am not really showing the upward component much it is there obviously but it is not it's only a small value so i am just showing it as a small upward lift similarly in this part of the phase plane v dot is negative and w dot is also negative so it's actually leftwards and upward but i'm not showing much of the uh, downward turn i'm showing it mostly like like as if it's turned to the left only but there is a small component which is also downwards the same arguments apply to other parts of the phase plane okay so now that we have said may prepare the ground let us see what happens if initial condition is somewhere between 0 and so this cut off point is a somewhere between 0 and a that means let's say a point p1 which is such that it is between 0 and a right so then what happens so note that uh, p1 is inside this region of this part of the phase plane inside that region v dot is negative w dot is positive right so that means uh, the flow is leftwards and slightly upward the upward is small as we have argued before So it will turn to the left and uh, it will go to the origin. So anywhere inside this region, actually, it will uh, parallel anywhere in this stretch between zero and a on the v-axis, it will simply head straight to the origin. So life is simple. So now, if you plot this, so if I give the voltage a kick, so it goes to some point less than a, it will simply quickly return back to the origin, back to zero. So if I plot this as a graph, so this is t, this is vt, right? Vt starts from some value less than a. So this so this uh, line is a. This is my initial condition. Right? It will just simply fall back to zero quickly. So that's what you are seeing here. Now this is a very interesting case. Consider the case where uh, P2, the point P2, which is above a but less than one. So it is like this. Right? Uh, <clears throat> so then what happens? When you start from this stretch, something very interesting happens. So you see that uh, this point P2 is a part of this region among the four regions, and within this region, you can see that V dot is positive, W dot is positive. Now V dot, uh, so we are not on the V null plane, so somewhere out there in the open ocean. So uh, V dot is uh, positive, but W dot is uh, negligible. So you just have a rightward flow. So I keep going to the right, right, and uh, so once you hit V null line, right, you, you can't go any further right because uh, V dot uh, is zero on this. And if you if you get pushed off beyond, you'll get kicked back onto the line because uh, here V dot is positive, right? But this zero, this is here at V dot is negative, here at V dot is zero, here V dot is positive. So so you will basically go to this point uh, once you go to the curve, you kind of stop. But you only stop in the horizontal direction, in the v dot direction. But uh, once you reach the v null plane, at this point your w dot start acting up, because w dot is positive is uh, non-zero on the v null plane. So on the v null plane, v dot is zero. But w dot is non-zero. So what is the direction of w dot here? So let us see what is w dot here. Uh, w, so this this entire region is below w null plane. And below W null plane, we have concluded before that W dot is positive. So W dot is upward here, and it is dominating V dot, so it will start moving up. So very beautiful. So here, what happens is, 
it'll it'll climb up a little bit. Let us say, imagine that it'll climb up straight up, right? If it climbs straight up, then in this part, V dot is negative, so it'll get pushed back to the curve. Uh, the curve is kind of large. Hello. Hello. Any question? Yeah. So if it goes up uh, straight up, then it'll get pushed back to the curve, right? So it so basically what happens is it'll again here if it goes up uh, it'll get pushed back to the curve so it'll keep hugging the curve and slowly start creeping up climbing up the curve once it goes to the top right uh, again here also the w dot is uh, still positive but uh, v dot is negative so it'll it'll kind of turn left and so it head straight through the open ocean right and it uh, reaches this part on this part w dot is negative but v dot is still quite strong turn to the left so it will keep heading further and further and further until so because the thing is only on the v null plane w dot is a significant influence once it is off the v null plane v, v dot takes takes over v dot is high outside so v dot uh, pushes it all the way to the here to this point and then it hits the vinyl fan again it can't go beyond because if it goes beyond v dot is positive here so it will get pushed back to the curve once it gets comes to the curve it's attracted to the curve so once it reaches the curve now you see that in this region you are right now above the w null plane and above the w null plane w dot is negative so on the v null plane curve w dot is negative so you are pushed downwards again we are placing the arguments of what we have used in this stretch so it slowly creeps down this vinyl plane until it reaches the origin and origin is a fixed point there's no moving from there anywhere it it stays there so this is something so very beautiful happens right when you start from p2 any point within between a and 1 if you start from 0 to a you just simply creep back to the origin but if you start from between a and 1 you creep up to this line uh climb up a little bit up to this point and then literally fall right from here to here and then slowly climb down to origin and you stay there so if you plot all this as a curve right as a function of uh, time v as a function of time okay so what happens um so your initial condition is between a and 1 so you start like this You go to the high value. I see that that high value is exactly equal to one, right? Because you have gone up to this point. After that, you climb down again, up to zero. And you see that no matter where, uh, once you cross this threshold, no matter where you start, it doesn't matter. You always go only that to that point, right? And once you go to that point, after that, the dynamics doesn't depend upon the initial condition. the initial condition only determines uh, this part of the curve right once you reach this peak after that the subsequent evolution of the state is completely independent of the initial state it so once you leave this point you always go to this max value and after that you follow this whole thing right uh, right and uh, come back to zero <coughs> so this this part of the curve it has a standard shape right and it is this part of the curve right only depends on the initial condition right so what does this remind you of at least partly what does it look like anybody Yes, Sandeep, can you answer? Anybody? Hello. Hello. Somebody is cooking. Okay. So it looks like an action potential. Hey, P. Because action potential, we said that once the initial uh, condition is above some threshold. you get a full blown action potential of a standard size and shape right so 
when initial condition is less than this threshold A, it simply returns back to the origin. But once it crosses the, that A, it will always uh, make this uh, perfect journey, right, and produce a waveform of a standard shape. OK, so yeah, so, uh, so this is what happens. And you see this, this is just a, so what I've just done is a schematic, right? It's just a hand-drawn schematic. But same thing you get if you do a simulation, right? If uh, so, in this case, a is uh, a is 0 0.5, that a is 0 0.5. So if you start from a value less than 0 0.5, it will simply come back to zero. But if you start from a value greater than 0 0.5 and less than one, it will produce this more or less standard shape before it comes back to zero. So this is what happens when uh, i is zero. But if you start increasing i further. Right at some point, uh, then mo this, something more interesting happens. This is what we'll be looking for in a good neuron model, which is oscillations, right? Uh, like producing a, a train of spikes. Okay, so so what happens is when I when you increase uh, <clears throat> right. So when I increase uh, the uh, the current further, i is current increase further. Sorry, uh, so the, this is venal plane, and uh, sorry, ignore this black line, right? And they ignore this. This red line is the W null plane. So, so, so basically, we have increased. Uh, we have uh, when you increase the current, i a. Right, you basically, so if you look at this equation, you are basically lifting up the venal plane. So imagine that you lifted up the venal plane to a point. Which, so initially, the venal plane and the double venal plane were intersecting somewhere here. This is what we have seen before. Right now, you have lifted this venal plane up to a point where these two meet somewhere in this part of the venal plane. So you see that venal plane can be thought to have, can be divided into three, three regions. So region one is this uh, three branches. The first branch is this part. The second branch is this middle branch between the minimum point and the maximum point, right? And the third branch is beyond the maximum point, which is the third branch. So the first branch is infinity and third is also infinite, but the second branch is finite. Also I noticed that in the first branch, the slope is negative, second branch slope is positive, third branch slope is ne negative again. So now take this uh, case where uh, the two intersect, the two nucleus intersect in the middle branch. And now let us see what happens. Okay, so we also know again, like like before, that uh, above the venal plane, V dot is negative, and above the double null plane, W dot is negative. So with these two rules, you can fill up all the blanks and figure out that uh, you know, in this part, V dot and W dot both are negative. In this part, V dot is positive, W dot is negative. Etc. Etc. So you see that therefore, in this part the flow is left and downwards. In this part, in this part the flow is right and downwards. In this part the flow is right and upwards. In this part the flow is left and upwards. So you see that there is some kind of a circulation going on around this point. In fact, uh, we can also do stability analysis. I haven't done that. You can do it like a homework problem. You can do stability analysis of this point and find out that it's unstable. It's, it's an actually unstable focus. And you can also see the circulation of flow around it. Right? So with this, uh, I'll just say that uh, you will get oscillations, you'll get limit cycles. So therefore, so basically when the intersection point is somewhere here, right? So, so this is branch one, this is branch two, and this is branch three. So the intersection point of the two is in the branch one, there's excitability, right? That's the kind of thing we have seen here. This property is called excitability where once the initial condition goes beyond the threshold, it will produce some kind of an action potential. Now when the intersection point is in branch two, right? Then you have limit cycles, uh, which is shown in this plot. Uh, you can see very nice oscillations of the standard shape. So even if you put up them, it will come back to exactly the same waveform. 
Okay, so now if you increase your current further, so basically as you increase the current further, you are simply lifting up the win alpha line. Okay, because basically that's what it's happening here, right? W is equal to so the win alpha line is basically given by W is equal to f of v plus i a. So if you are increasing i a, W win alpha line is simply getting lifted up. As you lift, keep lifting it up. The two null clients will intersect in the right branch at some point, and it look like this. Okay, and uh, here again, if you apply the stability criteria, f prime is negative, and uh, so that will be less than zero, and b by r is is positive. Therefore, right uh, delta is positive, and uh, f prime is negative. Therefore, uh, delta is also negative. Therefore, it is stable point. So this point is stable. So just like intersection point here, where it is stable, this point is also stable. And uh, so in this case, mirror modulus remains stable at a high value, right? This corresponds. This is sort of like uh, the regime four in Hodgson-Huxley model. So we have seen in Hodgson-Huxley model that if you keep on increasing the current input, at some point the action potentials disappear, and you'll have oscillations. Sinusoidal like oscillations and, it's, and which keep on reducing in amplitude. As you increase the current input, even those oscillations disappear and reduce to a small ripple, and the voltage will be high value all the time, right? So that is the remnant will be tonically depolarized. It's all the time depolarized. So normally it is depolarized only when it gets excited, and it is depolarized only transiently by producing producing an action potential. After that, it just returns back to the regular polarity. But whereas in this case, it's all the time depolarized. So that's what happens when your input current is very high. So some of so the, some, of, some of these things which you have seen in the Hodgson-Huxley model, which is such a complicated model, can already be seen in, in such a simple model, which is the Fujinokuma model. Right. So in this, in this simulation now, here uh, the two null frames intersect in the third branch. When you do that, if you start from some random initial condition, the voltage goes to the high value of 1.5 and stays there. <clears throat> now the same model. So the model has successfully shown three uh, very different dynamical behaviors, which we have seen in case of Hodgson-Huxley model. Although it is only a two-variable model and also of uh, much lower degree of nonlinearity compared to Hodgson-Huxley model. There is a fourth uh, dynamical regime which is also exhibited by the Fujinoko model. This is called bistability. How does it work? So, so imagine that you know you can you, have, you can play around with the uh, model parameters and arrange the two null clients in such a way that so we have seen so far uh, three cases: intersecting here, intersecting here, intersecting here. These are three cases that we have seen. But imagine a situation where you are able to intersect, sorry, intersect uh, like this. Okay, basically, it's intersection between a between an N-shaped or an inverted N-shaped null line and a straight line, right? So imagine the parameters are such that uh, the, the two intersect like this uh, at three intersection points. I'll call them P1, P2, and P3. Then what is the dynamics? Okay, so let us look at that. So you can easily show that P1 and P3 are stable points and P2 is a saddle. How is that? So you can see that <clears throat> at P1, the slope of the V null line is negative and the slope of the W null line is positive. Okay, so F prime is negative, which is less than V by R, V by R is positive, therefore delta is positive. And since F prime is negative, Tau is also negative, so therefore delta is positive, tau is negative, it's a stable point. Similar conditions exist even near P3. F prime is again negative here, it's negative here, and uh, so therefore tau is positive and it's, and it's less than B by R, so tau is positive, and F prime is negative, therefore tau is also negative. Sorry, the first one delta is positive, so F prime is negative, so tau is negative, so therefore delta is positive, tau is negative, so it's stable. If you look at the intersection point in the middle branch, so here um, the F prime is actually higher than the slope of the double null point than B by R. So F prime is actually 
sorry prime is actually higher than b by r yeah f prime is actually higher than b by r therefore delta is negative so it has to be saddled so tau doesn't matter so what that means is this is a stable point okay that means if i get product of this i return to this right something like this if i this is also stable point if i get product of this i return to this so at this point to the saddle so if i get product in this direction i move away therefore there must be some other direction where if i get product i move towards p2 because p2 is a saddle okay so there exists a certain line along which flow it directly flows towards p2 okay so on this line flow is straight towards p2 but uh, if you off this line if you get off this line if you get off to the left flow simply goes to p1 if you get off to the right flow simply goes to p3 okay so therefore this line separates the entire plane so i'm going to extend this line this line separates the entire plane into two regions where if i start from anywhere in this region i go to p1 because in this in this part of the space there's only one fixed point only one stable fixed point that is p1 therefore all flow goes to p1 similarly in this part of the phase plane right to the right side of the separate fix right all flow goes to p3 therefore this line that separates these two regions is called a separate fix so so simultaneously there are two stable points in the for this neuron uh, therefore this is supposed to have the quality of bistability you can have other kinds of bistability we will see that later but this is a very simple kind of bistability where there are two fixed stable fixed points uh, both are stable and uh, the neuron can be in one of these two states depending upon the initial condition if it is the initial condition is somewhere in this region it will go to p1 otherwise it will go to p3 you can see that here if i um so if i start from a small initial voltage it goes to a value close to zero if i start from a higher initial voltage it will go to a value close to one okay both are possible so sorry the plot is somewhat kind of stretched out it's very hard to see the three zero crossing because it's very horizontally stretched out now so these kinds of uh, states are called up down states there are real neurons which exhibit these kinds of behaviors so in the, these kinds of neurons are found uh, extensively in the cortex right you know the brain is surrounded by the sheet of neurons called the cortex so in the cortex there is a very important uh, class of neurons called the pyramidal neuron and some pyramidal neurons in the cortex exhibit this kind of uh, this kind of behavior it is the membrane voltage of this neur these neurons can remain for a long time in a slightly higher voltage or for a long time in a lower voltage okay so these states are called up down states so for example this whole thing is an up state whereas this whole thing is a down state so it switches between the up state and down state here it looks like a digital device so normally neurons right uh, shows spikes and it the spikes look like this that is the neuron is mostly at the best end value of the resting potential it gets excited and shows the spikes right whereas some neurons have this interesting property the voltage goes up and kind of stays in the higher values for, for an extended period and while it is in that high values it also momentarily produces this action potential this spikes and you can see them here so during the upset it also produces some spikes right but upset is very interesting it will stay up at a high value voltage for a for an extended period right again and so on so these kinds of behaviors can be seen by uh, some pyramidal neurons of the cortex pyramidal neurons are there, are there in lot many parts of the brain right and uh, similarly there's another part of the brain called the striatum which is located inside a uh, part of the is a circuit in the brain called the basal ganglia and the striatum has a special kind of neurons called the spiny neurons or medium spiny neurons 
and these neurons also exhibit this kind of behavior they can stay in up or down state now if a so the, the, so if you compare this with your uh, circuit transistor circuits in a computer the digital circuits the signal there is looks like this it simply goes you know, between a high value and a low value that means flat right uh, so this is a digital signal so in, in so the up down neurons seem to behave like uh, you know a digital device right and not only that if you see this behavior right that if so it's by stability it has by by stability behave property right so if i start from a low value it will stay there here and start from a high value it will stay stay here so can you think of a nice application of a device like this anybody so once you kick it to a high state it will stay there forever until you come back once you kick it to a low state it will stay there forever so a device like this can be used for memory right in fact in electrical engineering in computers right and digital systems if you want to store information for so long time which is what memory is all about use certain circuits called flip flops which can store information as uh, let's say voltage uh, of of a high value or voltage of a low value right uh, exactly through very similar dynamics it it has a fixed point where the voltage will remain like that for a long time at a certain high value or lower such devices are example of that is flip flops are used as memory devices in digital systems and these neurons behave exactly like that and what makes the you know the whole argument even more compelling is that striatum is a part of the brain which has very interesting memory memory functions and cortex has memory of many kinds uh, particularly a part of the cortex called the prefrontal cortex that has a lot of role in memory uh, of long term memory so it's very natural that uh, in the cortex you have neurons which have this kind of behavior this bistable behavior or is up which can show this up down states so finally we have uh, <clears throat> if you summarize the pigeonogo model we have seen that it has four different kinds of dynamical regimes or dynamical behaviors for a small current ia right actually especially for ia equal to 0 there's only the fixed point is at the origin at this point it shows excitability that is if my initial condition is less than a threshold it just quickly returns back to the origin but if it is greater than some threshold it will show this long uh, excursion to a max value and comes back right uh, to the zero after after a long journey so that's called excitability okay as you increase current further uh, you will reach a situation where the two null planes meet in the second branch of the v null plane then you will have limit cycles so these are like the spike trains of a neuron and as you increase the current further the two null planes intersect in the third branch and when that happens again we have only one fixed point and then that fixed point is stable uh so and this is a high value of voltage because this is a voltage axis so therefore when you start uh, when you start anywhere in the phase plane neuron goes to this value and stays there in a in a high high voltage uh, state so this is called a depolarized state so this is similar to what happens in the hot sensing model when you give very very high current now in addition to all these three things imagine that you are able to choose the parameters of the model such that the slope of the double null plane is very small right so that is uh, b by r b is much smaller than r so then the two null planes intersect uh, like this right and uh, you have three intersection points and, and in that case the two intersection points on the sides will end up being stable and the one in the center will be a saddle node so in in this case the neuron exhibits by stability and the neuron can be used um, to store information it will have memory functions so uh maybe let us uh, st uh, stop here for today and tomorrow we'll discuss the morris takar model and uh, then we'll look at 
a slight generalization of all these kinds of neuron models, uh, which is called the Izakovich model. So any questions?